All right, everybody, welcome to Dash Digital Cash. Rod here, uh, talking to you directly from BitConf in Brazil. That's the largest Bitcoin cryptocurrency conference organized by Vladimir Sipra. He's the largest uh, admin on the largest Bitcoin group also on Facebook. And this event uh, is being sponsored by Brasiliex, uh, one of the largest uh, cryptocurrency exchange, and they also uh, deal with Dash in Brazil. I have the pleasure now to actually talk with John Mad Dog. He's the, no, also known as the godfather of Linux. John, welcome. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. I did not have the time to watch your lecture. I was busy here recording tons of interviews. But let's just go a, a quick overview the importance of the open source code for this the cryptocurrency revolution. That are, They started into different uh, decades, but they are very close friends. Yes, uh, if you're going to look for something to give people confidence that you're being fair, treated fairly and that nobody is trying to siphon off money illicitly, you really need to have open source software because you want to be able to let people see how the software works and what it's doing to give them the confidence that it really is doing the right thing. So right now, uh, there's tons of talk about blockchain, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and this generation, the computer the generation, the millennials, they're becoming very technical, uh, based on reason, based on numbers, based on mathematics and physics. Other generations, they just, they went with the flow, they went with the wave. How do you see this impact for the future generation regarding this, this mechanical way of thinking based on uh, code is law? Well, I'm sorry, but I am a physicist, an electrical engineer, and things like that. So I actually say that everything is based on math. Math is the explanation of physics. Physics is the explanation of how the world works, okay? And so I believe that, you know, if you don't know math, you have to rely on what other people are saying, which is a mistake, okay? And uh, as an example, Newton, was he called the father of physics. But Newton, in order to explain physics, had to invent calculus. That's how much math is, is intertwined. And I have a retirement project, which I, I should call Mad Dog's Monastery of Math, Music, Microcomputing, Microbrewing, Microwinery, Microdistillery. Wow. So, but the math and the music go together because all the great musicians, Beethoven, Mozart, were first and foremost mathematicians. And so music is really based on math. You know, harmonics, you know, all that type of stuff. It's math and physics that create it. So when I go and I talk to students who hate math, but they love music, I say I got good news and bad news for you. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, so today, YouTube especially help broadcast in a large scale cryptocurrency. Majority of the information that I got access from my personal investment, from all the knowledge, it came from YouTube. I became a YouTuber to do the same. And this, this flow of information, it's unstoppable at the moment. How do you see this is gonna play in the future uh, with this wave that's coming with more people uh, having access to free information and this technology? Well, Richard Stallman, who started the Free Software Foundation, and, and, and I, to a certain extent, believe that all information should be free. Not only free of cost, but free to access. So you need to be, you know, if you trap information, then it does nobody any good. And if you look at all the great things that have happened in the past because information was free, you know, things like recipes, right? Recipe books. You know, if you want to go and, and make some new dessert, well, you take a recipe, you change it slightly, and now this creates something new. So people, you know, when you, when you do that, everything speeds up dramatically. 
But if you try and hold it, if you try and keep it closed and hide it, then you know, you may die. And all of a sudden, the information you had is lost. Okay. I've, I, I worked for companies that they had proprietary software, and for one reason or another, that proprietary software went out of favor. And yet they refused to open up the source code for software that they weren't going to sell anymore. Because they said, oh, there's some type of intellectual property in there, it is valuable. But it's only valuable if people use it. So if you're, if you're not going to sell it, you're not going to exchange it, you really should make it open source. And they really had a hard time with this. They had a hard time understanding this. Many years ago, when I was helping IBM formulate their, their open source strategy, I went to a meeting and I saw a letter from Lou Gerstner that said, in the past, IBM has been a closed source company unless we made a real business decision to make it open source. And that was terrible because the engineers have wanted to do this. Yeah. It was like sticking them through a, the, a, a horrible death, right? But the letter from Gershner said, now in the future, you know, everything we do will be open source unless there's a real business case made to make to keep it closed source. And that one letter, that one sentence, really turned around everything that IBM was doing. And so the next year, IBM invested a, a billion dollars in open source technologies, and they carefully measured it, and they found out that they made two billion dollars in revenues off of that investment. Crypt cryptocurrency today is the first main use of the blockchain technology. What would you like to see the blockchain being used for that, that would really change how we reorganize society? Well, I mean, I travel a lot. So I, I go to countries and I say, okay, here's my dollars and I have to exchange it and stuff. So I go to one of these exchange organizations and then I have some money left over, you know, in, in cash and, and trying to make, trying to figure out how much it really costs. If I just had cryptocurrency, so it's basically one cryptocurrency, I could say to the person in the store, how much is that in con? And they say, oh, it's this much in con. I could do a little calculation in my head, say, oh, that's a reasonable price. Problem solved. Here's my con, right? And then they have con. And they say, oh, what can I buy with con? And they, they may look into, you know, do a research or Google search or something, find there's lots of stuff that they need that they can buy a con. So they take the con and they buy it. And the con is moving now, right? But what has happened, you know, if, if they're afraid the con is going to go down in value, the answer is simple. You bring it in, you look to see what you need that is using con, and you use the con to buy it. Somebody comes into your store with Lira, and you say, will you take your change in con? And they say, sure. And now you've gotten rid of it, right? But the con is now circulating. It continues to circulate. And add liquidity to the network. Liquidity. That's the secret. My, from my viewpoint, when people started holding on to cryptocurrency, they say, oh, I've got 10 million billion Bitcoins. They're really doing the Bitcoin a disservice because what's happening is it's not circulating. It's not being used as the, as the currency it should be. People are thinking that if they save for the future, they're gonna become millionaires and that's not really the purpose of cryptocurrency. Exactly. And it's certainly not the purpose of the blockchain. The blockchain is a ledger. It's a distributed ledger. It's like you, you used to have ledgers in the accountants, you know, the journals, the ledgers. How are you supposed to make money off of a ledger? You don't make money off the ledger. You make money off the transactions that are represented in the ledger, okay? So this is what we're, we're trying to do with Khan. We want, we want to create this, this, this utility token that people can use, even if they're across the, across the world, even if they don't speak our language, right? I want to buy something from you. How much con is it? It's this much con. Boom. There you go. You purchased it. Look about digital video, digital music, digital stuff that really, you can set up a smart contract to buy that. And you know, as a seller, you can set up a smart contract and people say, oh, I want to buy that. Here's my con. Boom. It's done. In a fraction of a second, you've got it. You know, that type of thing is going to be very, very interesting. This automatic transactions, purchase, 
based on the thing of this is how much I want to sell it for, and when you meet my when you meet my note, then we're going to do it. It's done automatically. What's the advice that you would give for this generation and the next generation re regarding the use of blockchain and cryptocurrency in a way that will benefit everyone? Well, first of all, understand it. Understand how you want to use it. Understand the principles behind it. You don't have to be an uh, open source programmer to do it, but understand it. And then... When your legislators go and they start making crazy rules and stuff like that, you wait a minute, you know. You can't control me now. You, well, it's not, not only can you not control me now, but think about this from a economic standpoint. So many years ago, when I came to Brazil, the use of open source was looked at as something from the left or socialists or communists or whatever. And it was looked at as a political thing. But open source is not a political thing. It is an economic thing. What it does is it helps create jobs. It lowers the cost of producing something. It allows things to come to market faster. And it, because it creates jobs, that's something that every politician should go along. I don't care what party you are. If you as a politician said to me, oh, I don't want to create jobs, or I want to keep sending all this money outside of Brazil to the United States and China. You won't be reelected. You won't be reelected. I mean, yeah. it's crazy talk, right? Yeah. So, you know, you, you've got to move open source from being a political thing into an economic thing. And, you know, in, in cryptocurrency and blockchain is the epitome of that. It's strictly business. And there's nothing wrong with doing business. There's nothing wrong with making money, you know. A lot of times people say to me, oh, this company is making money. Sure it is, because the opposite of making money is going bankrupt. And when you go bankrupt, the people that work for the company are put out of work. Their families are affected. So having a company and, and generating work for people, meaningful, useful work, is a very, very good calling in life. You know? And you know, I want people to understand that, that cryptocurrency can help with that and can help particularly uh, a country like Brazil who wants to manufacture things and export things to other countries yeah. makes it a lot easier by using cryptocurrency. John, it was a pleasure to have you here in our conference in Brazil. You're always welcome. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Once again, everybody, Rod here from Dash Digital Cash Brazil. I'll catch you another time.